Today we're going to take a brief look into what a landscape designer does. So we're going to look at this art career and just take a quick peek as to, you know, what it's like to design gardens and somebody's backyard. And then we're going to zoom in and create our own imaginary garden and add in some different features and things like gnomes or fairies or anything else that you want to add let's in take a look at this how to plan a landscape design so if you were a landscape you know designer you would be looking at somebody's yard and think about hmm what are some areas that I'm going to highlight or feature or plants that I'll put in here to create this amazing place to go around? So the first thing that a landscape you know, designer or architect, a professional starts with is they look at the property like survey and they see that map that usually gives them an idea of, okay, this is what I'm working with. So they'll see where the house is, how big the yard is, what other plants are currently there and how much space they have to use. So you can see how this shows like the streets and just a lot of other features and areas. And then what they do is they take that space and they plan and play with it and get ideas of, you know, do you want to put a deck down? Do you want to put different plants and various things here or there, a pool even, um, a waterfall? You think of all those little features that maybe you would love in your backyard or your dream yard that you could go run around and play. Would you have, you know, a big giant swing set area, your own obstacle course or, you know, trampolines that are in the ground? I mean, you name it, whatever you come up with, they come up with that plan. And once they do that, they sketch out many different ideas. So just like when you draw your stories or your paper, you write a story, you draw different things, you start off with a sketch. And then once you get what you like, you go in and add all those colors. So this is one of the final plans, as you could see, like this would be the house. And then they would show how they would take that yard and they would add in all these different features and areas. So like, here's a pool, here's the deck areas to sit at you know this is obviously the house and the driveway and like a water feature over here and a big yard so you think about all of those things and what i'm going to have us do is to go today and understand and create our own like if you were in one area or corner how would you take um and zoom into a spot on your plan that you come up with so here are some examples of gardens you can have a pathway where you can walk into a garden you know at Walt Disney World they have figures and you know different famous characters made out of flowers and, and different things in their gardens gardens can be outside you know next to lakes and ponds they could be inside where you get to explore it almost like in a greenhouse um, you know, the nice pretty colors, think about all of those, as well as, you know, the different flowers that you might plant in order to have butterflies or hummingbirds or bees in order to come and, you know, experience those. So fairy gardens are another little thing. If you want to draw a fairy garden today, you could do that where maybe you add in some different features and things. A lot of people enjoy adding little fairies or little fairy gardens in their pots and plants next to a garden or putting some of these things in their garden itself where you can get these figures or little doors to add to your trees. So just take a look at some of these fun little features where you don't have to add the fairies, um, but you could also just have little things of what they might enjoy in your garden. So these are some, just some other pictures that you can see. You know, if you go to a plant store or different things, you'll notice that they might have a setup where you can come and enjoy a little miniature backyard. This says fairy garden, but how cool with the house and all these steps, like I want to play back here and even have your little veggies growing. So some fun facts, um, looking at garden gnomes, is back in Germany, there was a sculptor in the 19th century, Philip Griebel, who came up with a garden gnome. And it wasn't until Sir Charles Isham brought 
you know, 21 of these gnomes that were made out of clay. So imagine how big and heavy they must have been to England. And he put them in his garden and he hid them all over different places because they're said to protect the garden and assist with the nightly garden duties. So that way your flowers and things are protected. Um, so there's still only one that is left from all of those back in the 19th century, and he named it Lampy, and it's displayed in the Lampert Hall today in England. So the gnomes that we see today, a lot of them are based off or around like Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarves from 1937. Um, but let's add in our own little gnome today if you want even a little gnome house or something so we have something protecting our gardens so what i want you to do is think about your imaginary garden what are you going to put in it do you want to put bird houses do you want to zoom into an area where maybe it's underneath your trampoline or, you know, what I used to do as a kid is I would have my, my mom's hostas where these big leafy plants out in uh, the yard and I would bring my toys out and I would play with them out there underneath and pretending like they were in a forest. And my brother and I would have our toys swinging, almost like imagine taking one of your little Legos and they're swinging from one leaf to another leaf. So what would you do if you zoomed in and saw, you know, really close in a garden? Or do you want to zoom out and have different things and have your gnomes or little fairy garden in there? So that's what we're going to play with today. We're just going to use markers and crayons and a pencil. And let's get started. So what we're going to use today is our 12 by 18 piece of paper. It's a rather large piece of paper. And you can think about, do you want to have it horizontal or vertical. The first thing that I'm going to do on here is I'm going to draw a tree house. So I'm going to start off with a triangle top and draw these two lines on the side. And then as you can see, I'm going to connect it. So we want to make it look a little more three dimensional. So I'm going to draw two lines off to the sides and draw a straight line to connect those. And then what I'm going to do is draw the other one on an angle. It's going to be perpendicular, very similar to the other one, and connect it. So you can make your roof any design that you want. I'm just drawing a couple of lines on here. They could be a little wavy, whatever you would like. And then we need to make a little entrance for our birds. So I'm just doing a simple circle. And what I'm going to do in order to make the perch of what I want the birds to go on is I'm going to do a little curve, draw these two lines, and connect it with a circle. So now it looks like one of those wood dowel sticks sticking out there so the birds can land on it. The next thing I'm working on here is adding on the stand. So I'm just going to draw two lines all the way to the bottom of my paper. And this will have my birdhouse just standing up like this in the yard. The next thing I'm thinking, and you can choose to do this or not, is I'm going to add little areas. I'm thinking of having one of my gnomes just standing on this. So it's very easy. You draw two lines and you connect it by drawing a small circle. Voila! So now it looks like another part. You can continue on and add more or less. Um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use my brush and I'm going to draw different tall pieces of grass. So all I'm doing is starting from the bottom and I'm using my pencil and I'm just lifting it up as soon as I draw those marks. So you're going marks to the left and then you drag it to the right, maybe have a few going straight up and if it crosses over a few areas, that's great. The next thing you'll notice is I'm just adding on a couple little circles here and it makes it into one of those really pretty purple flowers I usually see. And it's just really tiny little circles. So here, I'll zoom in on this spot so you can see what I'm doing. 
This is just one simple way to add different flowers that you might find on tall grass, even those uh, cottontails. So here you can see I just added in a couple. And now let's move on to some other parts that we want to use on our piece. At this point, you can keep following along or you can start creating your own designs and things that you want. So right now, I'm just gonna do some larger flowers and there's a really fun trick that I like. The first thing you're gonna do is draw a circle and then you're gonna make it almost look like a sun. And all you do is connect those petals by drawing rainbows. So from one top to the other, you'll end up making these beautiful kind of perfect looking flowers so you can create any flowers that you would like or big leaves you could have sticks on here you name it and throughout the year we've talked about how to create overlapping so remember when we have something behind something um, it you won't see all the other pieces you could create different flowers that you enjoy creating you don't have to create the same ones as me um, you can also go and make the lines closer to each other as you come off, like a very bright looking sun, and you can leave it like this, or you could connect it by drawing triangles, and that'll give a different look to your flowers. So I'm just going to make like a little flower patch here and add in some different features and things. Might you take the time now to go and do that and add in more? Do you want to add in another birdhouse? You know, do you want to start working on a gnome house? There's so many different things. Or your fairy garden, if that's what you were interested in. So I'll play some music here. You can follow along and copy me. And if you need help, just let me know. You'll notice here I'm just adding in my gnome. I have a handout for us on how to draw different gnomes and expressions. So you can either copy me from here or you can look at the paper that um, I'm sharing with you in class as well as in our Seesaw or Google Classroom. But it's quite simple. You're just making it any way you want. I'm going to hide a couple of gnomes in my garden too 
And if you don't show all of it, their body, that's fine because sometimes they're hidden. So you could have just a hat poking up. You could have them popping around a side or a corner, or you can have a little gnome character here. Maybe I could even have him fishing like he's trying to fish into one of my ponds. Mm -hmm.